Hello everyone. Today we will discuss one of our published paper and that uh, was about uh, how to fabricate uh, high quality proscribed thin films. As we know that uh, there are different methods uh, to prepare such uh, thin films. Uh, one of the famous is uh, conventional anti solvent dripping where uh, we need to drip or we need to pour uh, anti solvent uh, on, this, on the proscribed precursor before ending the spin coating mostly uh, before 15 seconds 20 seconds uh, depending on the uh, the lab procedure however there are several factors we need to keep in mind uh, like uh, how much is the volume what is the time and at which t uh, point I need to drip this uh, solvent uh, and that that should be followed very strictly otherwise you will uh, you will get uh, thin films with many cracks and uh, you may have pin holes in your in your thin films and they may have some small grains and wide grain boundaries which can affect the performance of your your device so we we have we have developed some uh, one of the uh, uh, method which was called anti solvent fumigate process uh, with this process one uh, do not need to uh, to follow these strictly uh, strictly tracks uh, followed in the conventional anti solvent dripping so uh, by this method we can get uh, large grain size and the narrow grain boundaries and smooth morpho morphology uh, so uh, was the uh, actually the schematic illustration of the method for example if we have a proscribed precursor and in conventional anti-solvent dripping we have uh, to drop this uh, anti-solvent uh, with the uh, very care or uh, uh, so uh, if we want to get uh, high quality perovskite layer after heating or giving some temperature we can get this thin film or the, this is the same image of the uh, conventional solid dripping and we got the efficiency after optimization uh, like 18.65 percent on the other hand in anti solvent fumigate, uh, fumigate process uh, where we have petri dish filled with the uh, anti solvent in this case diethyl ether and we spin the proscribed precursor inside this closed container and after thermal annealing we got uh, some a smooth morphology and large green uh, size with the reduced green boundaries that is beneficial for the performance and we got uh, power con conversion efficiency up to 21.45 uh, uh, then one need to analyze the morphology uh, so we got these same images and if we compare for example uh, the conversion anti solvent dripping and anti solvent fumigation process for a different time so we 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 studied that and we got that uh, for 1.5 minutes uh, fumigation we we have very uh, large green size with reduced green boundaries and with smooth morphology as we can see in the uh, CAD method uh, and in the AFP uh, for 1.5 minutes to know the crystal structure of the of the prepared thin films so in the same images as we have seen for the CAD and 1.5 the morphology was quite different and we have large green size in 1.5 minute uh, fumigation process and the green size was large and uh, the pin holes were uh, reduced at the green boundaries and and the AFM analysis uh, the root mean square was uh, reduced from 29 to 14 nanometers 
that shows that uh, these thin films uh, anti solvent fumigation process for 1.5 can deliver thin films with a high with a higher uh, um, uh, smoothness compared to the CAD then if we see the XRD so XRD can tell us that uh, uh, the peaks were on the same angle and that shows all of the devices were all of, all the thin films were perovskite thin films. However, in the case of uh, anti solvent fumigation process for 1.5 minutes, uh, it was uh, the intensity was higher. It shows it was it were highly uh, uh, crystalline compared to the uh, other uh, process. Uh, uh, on the bottom uh, in Figure B we see the absorbance uh, with respect to the wavelength of the incoming light so the absorbance was increased so we concluded from this uh, that uh, if we have uh, open spaces at the green boundaries so incoming light uh, will pass through the, those uh, opening uh, open areas and uh, we, we will lost uh, most of the light passing through those areas. However, in the case of anti solvent fumigation process for 1.5 minutes, the green boundaries were compact. There were less green boundaries, so it is difficult for the for the incoming light to pass through those uh, open areas, and that will uh, th that light will be absorbed, and we can get uh, a more photo generated charge carriers compared to the conventional anti-solvent dripping. Then we uh, analyzed the thin films that uh, uh, what is the PL photoluminous intensity and the TRPL in the photoluminous intensity we we observed that uh, uh, compared to the conventional anti-solvent dripping the anti-solvent fumigation process for 1.5 minutes have reduced uh, uh, photoluminous intensity, reduced photoluminous intensity, which shows that uh, uh, the free charges uh, can be uh, collected, uh, or the uh, excitons, uh, electrons on one side and holes on other side, can be collected very effectively. And this can be explained with these uh, schematic illustration. For example, if we have photo excitation. Or photo generation of the charges so if we have high quality maybe we have uh, less radiative recombination and less non radiative recombination and we have you now we have uh, better charge collection in, at the in, at the corresponding uh, electrodes or at the corresponding uh, layers uh, similarly, this can be explained also with the TRPL. For example, if we have uh, higher time for the photo, for the charges to stay uh, at those uh, levels, so we can get these charges uh, uh, very easily compared to the other uh, charges produced in the uh, thin films. Uh, for example, uh, in the red uh, spheres, as we have uh, for the anti solvent fumigation pass for 1.5 minutes, so the time decay was higher compared to the CAD. This shows that we have uh, 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 higher time for the photo generated charges to be collected in the, uh, in the different uh, interfaces. Then we fabricated by keeping those uh, uh, those properties of the prepared thin films. We prepared uh, these devices as we we can see in the schematic diagram, and we got uh, uh, in the reverse and forward scan uh, JB curves. So if we see the uh, CAD uh, uh, prepared devices that is 18.6 percent efficient. 
However, in the other case, uh, after the optimization, the power carbohydrate efficiency was 21.45%. Uh, then one need to know that uh, uh, are these uh, processes or method, methods were reproducible or not. So we, we could form some statistical analysis of the, of the prepared devices. So if we compare the CAD and anti-silent fumigation process for 1.5, so the, uh, the gap or we can see the device's performance were quite close. That shows that uh, this method was highly reproducible. Then we calculate uh, the quantum efficiency of the device. As we can see the quantum efficiency of the uh, anti-silent fumigation process uh, devices were higher than the other one that shows that uh, we we can uh, we can convert more electron incoming photon to the charge generation and collect it uh, at the corresponding interfaces very effectively uh, on the other hand and figure on the other hand the uh, impedance uh, spectroscopy uh, the thin film prepared with the anti silent fumigation process the this shows the the first uh, circle uh, or the first half circle shows the recombination resistance to the uh, photogenetic charges so in the case of anti silent fumigation process the uh, resistance to a charge uh, recombination was was higher at the end compared to the other one these uh, also uh, we also perform the stability analysis as we have seen or uh, it is a fact that we if we have a high quality fluoroscite layer so we can improve the stability of the fluoroscite solar cells now such as here we have analyzed for 400 hours so the stability for the anti silent fumigation process was quite better compared to the conventional anti silent dripping. That, that uh, uh, shows us again that these uh, devices were um, prepared with high quality perovskite uh, layer.